Hello everybody, I'm Jaffa Archfiend, and this is a review of the latest Season 3 finale episode of My Little Pony, Friendship is Magic. Please hold the rage, please, just before, let me finish first, okay? This, to me, was alright. It wasn't the start of like, the music. The music was good. There's no denying that. David Ingram, Daniel Ingram, did a phenomenal job with the music here. It was fantastic. It was lovely. It was brilliant. The songs were the right pace. They were the right tone. It just fit. It fit. Let's go with the animation. The animation was good. It was stupendous. The studio did brilliantly with the animation. The voice actor, the voice actresses, everyone did their part splendidly. The lines were perfect. They were l brilliant. However, and this is a big however, storyline-wise, okay, admit, I'll admit, I don't mind so much Twilight becoming an alicorn, as much as a rage issue as that seems to be. The main thing I have a problem with it, though, is how they went about doing it. I think they should have made it a two-parter episode, rather than a one-parter episode. The feeling I got from that was, the episode was a bit rushed. It was just all over the place. Not all over the place in terms of like the story. That was good. It just seemed as if, though, Hasbro were trying to suddenly rush it all at us. It's just, whoo, get it all out on the screen as much as possible. Get this out as fast as possible. Make millions. That seems to be what Hasbro were going on in their little heads. Alright? But. But. And this is a big but. It, the, story in ex, the story could have done with a few more explanations. The point in fact. Why did the other main six, aside from Twilight and Spike, lose their memories of what they were before? I mean, judging by the town's reaction when Pinky got back to her normal self... It seemed that the town seemed to remember who they were before this whole destiny swapping thing happened. So why didn't they? I can maybe guess it was because of the whole destiny swapping thing swapping around their special talents, but I would have liked a little bit more explanation on that. I would have liked a little bit more stretch on that. I would have also liked a little bit more stretch on each pony's situation and how they're trying to handle it. Like, maybe explanation of, well, first of all, how they wound up there. I mean, I could maybe understand, like, maybe Rainbow crashing in Fluttershy's cottage before the whole thing happened, after taking a break after getting collapsed, crashing once again during a routine, and crashing there for a while, and then maybe somehow thinking that it's her cottage. Maybe, I don't know. But, and this is a big but for me, it's like, Rarity, Applejack's, was Rarity sleeping in Rainbow's cottage? Did, she, did they just get magically transported to each other's places? That seems to me a little bit iffy. And the fact that the rest of the Apple family didn't seem to have a problem with Pinky being the one with Applejack's cutie mark? Again, this would be where it would make more sense as a two-parter episode. You could have had all this stuff going on in the first episode... And then all the way up to when the Elements of Harmony started acting all funny and zap Twilight. And effectively fry her. Basically making the other five think they'd killed her. And then Twilight waking up in this whatever the hell that place was. And then going to credits. That to me would have been the great first episode of the two-parter for this whole finale. That to me would have made a lot more sense. It would have allowed more time, a little more effort. I'm not saying they didn't put effort into this. They obviously put effort into it. I mean, given the amount of songs that they did in, in this. But to me, it just felt they could have done a little bit more. You know what I'm saying? It, and then the second episode could have expanded on this whole, I don't know, astral plane thing that Celestia and Twilight were in. What exactly was that? I mean, Twilight never asked... To my recollection, whatsoever about where are we? What is this place? To me, that seems like something that Twilight would ask. Aside from the fact that Celestia is there, Twilight has shown that she's willing to question Celestia. 
case in point, the Discord episode, when Celestia brought Discord to Ponyville, Twilight was like, with all due respect, WHY DID YOU BRING DISCORD HERE?! <clears throat> That's what Twilight said. She questioned Celestia's actions. So why the hell she didn't ask Celestia where the hell they were in this episode just seems to me a little... iffy. She seemed to accept it just a little too readily, if you know what I mean, if you can see what I'm talking about. It seemed a little... Uh, I dare say this, because I know I'm going to get a flack out of this, but it seemed a little out of character for Twilight. I know I'm going to get flack for that, from like some of the more diehard Twilight Sparkle fans. Or maybe Hasbro or something, but it just seemed a little out of character. But, aside from that, what it, in terms of Twilight's transformation into an alicorn, that I like. That seemed to fit it quite nicely. I think that was an essence of her element of magic coming out of her body, and then starting to envelop her in this kind of magical cocoon thing. And then, when she returned to Ponyville, I liked that. That was lovely. That was, br that was gorgeous to me. It definitely seemed to have that whole aspect of a returning princess. I mean, remember when Luna did her return to Ponyville in the first episode? It was definitely with the whole crash of lightning and dark clouds looming over the skies and the purple mist before it's suddenly swirling around into the dark nightmare moon figure. That fit her because that is a nightmare. That... That is what little kids envision a nightmare as. This dark, foreboding presence and clamorous thunder and lightning and this dark fog. That is a nightmare. That fit that. That was brilliant. Just like this whole... Because Twilight Sparkle's cutie mark is the whole purple star with stars swirling around it. That made sense to come down as that. Poorly timed, given what happened in Russia and the meteor, but... Ugh, can't really blame him for that, because they have been working on this beforehand, but... Meh. I can just imagine the flack coming from that when people draw... Hang on a minute, because, let's face it, people love to find references in things, don't they? Let's be brutally honest. I mean, come on. They pulled an episode of Pokemon, because... The Tentacruel episode, you know, the giant Tentacruel smashing through a city, they pulled that because it resembled 9-11 somehow. Sorry if that offends anyone. I don't mean to offend anyone. It, to, that to me just seemed... I don't, how do you draw 9-11 from a giant octopus smashing through sky, smashing through buildings? But you can see where I'm going with this. If they can make connections with that, they'll probably make connections with this whole... With the way Twilight arrived. But to me, that seemed to fit her. That fit her because... She was a returning star. I don't know if this whole thing that Celestia and her were in was space, or the astral plane, or the afterlife, or what? Or some other dimension? That would have loved to have an explanation on that. Celestia explaining to Twilight what this whole plan of hers was. How she got... I mean, the whole Twilight's destiny being an alicorn. I would have loved a little more explanation on that. I mean, I could understand Celestia watching over Twilight, judging her progress, because, let's face it, when she was a foal, the rainbow hit her, and she went whoosh with magical energy. She made a tiny little dragon egg hatch and supersized it to Godzilla proportions. She was raw magical power in essence. I could understand maybe her destiny being this supreme sorceress like Star Swirl the Bearded type thing. I could understand that being her destiny. Come on, we've all thought that was going to be what she was. And Alicorn, though, I would have liked a little bit more explanation behind that. Maybe we'll get some of that explanation for how Celestia came to that conclusion in maybe Season 4. And that brings me to the next topic, actually, Season 4. Now, a lot of people are going, Oh, they've ruined, season, they've ruined My Little Pony with the whole Alicorn Twilight. I put this to you, though. They've now got an Alicorn Twilight to mess with. What are they going to do with her? I mean, what exactly is she going to do now as a princess of Equestria? Season 4, from what I can see, has some possibilities. Bear with me here. We know about the Griffin Kingdoms, but we've never actually seen them. We know about the lands of the zebras, Ze Zebrica or whatever it is, where Zecora comes from. And there's a whole other place out there 
beyond the borders of Equestria, as the Crystal Empire has shown and the whole dragon migration thing showed. So maybe, maybe some of the episodes in Season 4 would be Twilight acting as an ambassador or something like that to these other places. Or trying to fix problems in the kingdom as they go awry. Let's face it now. She's, in the previous three seasons, she was fixing problems in Ponyville. Now, she has all of Equestria to worry about. May even see Manhattan. May even see Philadelphia. May even see, I don't know, other pony-themed towns. Who knows? All I'm saying is, the ball is now in Hasbro's court. They can now either make or break the season four. They can either make or break it now. Depending on where they go, what they do with Alicorn Twilight will depend on what happens next. All I'm saying is... So in review, the finale was good, but it could have been a lot better if it was a two-parter. It could have been a lot more expanded on, it could have given more substance. They can't exactly claim it wasn't because of financial reasons. I mean, come on. They put in so many songs into this. I mean, come on. If you look up on the iTunes right now, I'm betting that you will probably find a whole bunch of songs. I can't do that since I'm in Britain and British iTunes doesn't have it. You have to specifically go looking up each song and since, well, I didn't actually stick around for the credits to see what each song was called. Probably will do that later. But, yeah. That's why Hasbro put in so many songs into that episode. They stitched all together the story with the songs. The songs seem to carry more of the story to it, from what I can see. But in review, it was a good episode, but could have been better if it was a two-parter or even an hour-long special. Hell, I'm surprised they even do they didn't do that, making an hour-long special, given that they were making 13 episodes. They claimed they were going to make 13 episodes, which they did. But they could have made the 13th episode an hour-long special given how much hype they've been putting up about the whole Alicorn Twilight thing. I'm surprised Hasbro didn't do that. I'm surprised they didn't even consider that. I mean, come on, that's a bit of a bum move on their part. They could have made a lot more songs. They could have made a lot more story to go with this. I'm just saying. But we will never know what happened in the writer's heads unless one of them tweets about what happened. Or Facebooks or whatever. I don't actually use Twitter because... I don't know, it just seems a waste of time to me. Bracing myself there. But, yeah, we've also now got more aspects now, because Twilight has actually still got stuff to learn. Despite what Celestia said. Well, yes, Celestia said she's got stuff to learn about being Alicorn. So we've got that to look forward to. I mean, what is she going to learn about being an Alicorn? One can only hope they're not going to instant OP her. Come on, because that's what's been everybody's fear, hasn't it been? That's what all your fears have been. The Twilight's now an Alicorn and is now overpowered, even more so than usual. But yeah, that's what everybody's fear is, that they've completely screwed her over. Let's see where this goes. That's all I'm asking. Once Season 4 rolls around, let's all take the time between now and Season 4's beginning to let it all sink in and think of what they could do with this new Alicorn Twilight. Aside from make toys and money. So, in review, it was a good episode, but could have been better if it was a two-parter or an hour-long special. Just to give the story more substance. That is the main problem, I think. It just lacked a certain amount of substance. So, the ball's now in your court, Hasbro. It is in your court now. Let us see what you come up with in Season 4. And we're watching. We're always watching. I'm Jaffa Archfiend. This has been a review of Season 3's finale episode of My Little Pony, Friendship is Magic. And I'll... That's me signing off. See ya!